once a month we do an educational moment at Biz Marketing, and it's an opportunity to just share uh, something with the team that's um, uh, maybe not directly related to what we do and our day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, and so for the education moment for this month, we all read this book by Patrick Lencioni, The Ideal Team Player. It's been around for a while. Um, Patrick talks about what it takes to be an ideal team player, and he identifies three core attributes. He calls them virtues. He talks about being humble, hungry, and smart. And when he says smart, he's not talking about your IQ, but more about your uh, EQ in terms of the team and the way that you work together as a team. So what I've asked uh, everybody on the team to do is kind of share with us what's one thing you really liked about uh, this book or what's one thing you learned? One thing I really like about this book is it doesn't really share any crazy, mind-blowing, complex strategy, but it just it enlightens the reader to just the simple truth of how when you have these three attributes and any one of them is lacking, it creates serious problems for a team. So it, it clearly outlines a common set of values, use that as a grounds to work together and um, have a shared value system. That's great. Anybody else? Yeah, I liked that it went from a story. So half the book was a story uh, about teamwork and the kind of finding the right people who have the qualities of hungry, humble, and smart. And then it goes into more of a description and self-assessment. So I really liked the self-assessment part. Uh, it kind of gave me a good idea of where I am good and where I need to do better at being an ideal team player. I like kind of the uh, focus on redeeming the employee rather than just kind of retribution, where they will talk about an employee maybe lacking in one or two areas, but they do seem to focus on how to kind of improve them, little steps you can take, and also about the reminders, because for the employee, if they don't know that they're doing something wrong, they may assume that after the first warning that their behavior has improved enough that they're okay. But they kind of stress the constant, just remind them, kind of prod them, just because you're trying to make them the ideal team player. That's not going to happen overnight. They really emphasize trying to work with the person to get them up to that point rather than just cut them loose because they're not perfect. So I kind of liked how they focused on that aspect. And I really enjoyed the format and that it caught our attention with a very interesting story and I could relate it to our team values, our team vibe, and it gave us clear examples of what the three values were and then it gave us steps to look into ourselves and look at other team members to see if there's areas for improvement. That's great. Yeah, one of the things that I really appreciate it as uh, the leader of the organization is, and, and Tim kind of touched on this, it's the sort of the coaching aspect, right? So if you take a, a, a football team, you know, you don't have every single player on the team functioning at 100% all the time, otherwise you'd win the Super Bowl every year, right? Um, and uh, I'm thinking about football, of course, with the Seahawks. Um, so it, it puts a certain onus on the coach to, you know, really coach to do their job and the job of the coach is to coach and, and i think as a leader i've really taken a lot away from um, the book in terms of that what i can do what tools i have available as a coach i wish i had this book 20 years ago because uh, i did lead a team a uh, much bigger team back then and uh, i think i would have really helped me do uh, a better job at leading that team so I really appreciate uh, everybody's time today. And uh, if you'd like to get this book, we highly recommend it. It's The Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni. Thanks everybody.